Hi DIYers, this is Michael from AlarmGrid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to enroll the Qualsys IQ Shock S with your Qualsys IQ Panel 2 security system, or you could be using the 319.5 MHz Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus. Uh, this is part of the uh, Qualsys S-Line sensors that use the S-Line rolling code encryption. And um, it actually doubles as a door and window contact sensor in addition to a shock sensor if you enable dip switch number three, uh, which I'm going to show you that um, right now, actually. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up the sensor because I want to show you what's inside um, because there, there might be some settings that you want to change in here. Um, so to open up the sensor, um, you want to take the magnet and put that off to the side. Don't have it um, be stuck to your screwdriver there. And um, so there's a little slot right here, and we can just take our flathead screwdriver and we can just insert it, and you see it pops right open, and we can open it up just like that. So there's some pretty cool stuff inside the sensor. Uh, first of all, we have a CR123A lithium battery here that's powering this sensor. Um, so we have a potentiometer, potentiometer, <laughs> fun word there. But um, what you can do is you can take um, a smaller screwdriver. This one's a little bit too big, but uh, you can uh, turn it, um, you can turn it uh, counterclockwise to uh, reduce the, the sensitivity minimum or you can turn it uh, clockwise to uh, increase the sensitivity um, towards maximum. So the potentiometer right there. Um, so you can go and get a smaller screwdriver and turn that as needed. Um, but we're going to leave ours alone right there. Um, but we also have three dip switches down here at the bottom. OK, uh, so the, the first one is for um, a, a test signal. So that way, if you have that one on, it's not going to send any signals to the panel. So the sensor won't work. Um, so you want to leave that one off, assuming you're using the sensor and having it reporting to your system, which is pretty much the purpose of the sensor. Uh, dip switch number two is for an LED and a sounder. Uh, that's going to drain the battery a little bit faster, but some users do like the feature to have um, the sensor provide its own warning that it's being activated. Um, so you can turn that on if you want. We're going to leave ours off uh, just because we want to save uh, the battery life on here as much as possible. And so we have uh, dip switch number three. Now this is uh, the one where the real action is. This is what enables the read switch for the sensor. Um, so that way it's going to double as a door and window contact sensor. And by that I mean, if you look on the side, you see that there is um, an indentation. It's a little triangle right here. I'll also show you when I have the sensor closed. And when we have the magnet um, next to the sensor, that's when the door window is closed. You have the magnet on the moving portion of the door window. You open up the door window, the magnet moves away, and that um, faults the sensor. So this sensor is going to give the same response. Assuming we have switch number three on, it's going to give the same response whether it detects a shock wave from someone breaking down the door window or if it detects that the door window has been opened um, the way that we're going to program it. So we're going to keep switch three on. Uh, we're going to leave it on alone. You see it is on right now. And so I'm going to close the sensor um, so I can show you the, the side indentation that I was talking about. Uh, so we just want to line it up here. We're going to get the top part first. Um, you just want to make sure it gets closed all the way. There we go. It's nice and closed all around. And you can see that there's an indentation right there, a um, little triangle right there. That's the side where the magnet goes. So like I said, uh, you have the magnet, and the door window is closed, door window is open, and it goes off. So uh, let's get to enrolling this. And it's the same whether you're using um, a standard Qualsys IQ Panel 2 or a 319.5 MHz Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus. So uh, let's get into programming it. So we're going to start the main screen of the system. We're going to click the small gray bar at the top. We're going to choose Settings, and we're going to choose Advanced Settings. And then we're going to enter in our installer code, which ours is at the default of 1111. And we're going to choose installation. We're going to choose devices. And we're going to choose security sensors. And then we're going to go to auto learn sensor. And the way we're going to enroll, we're going to um, open up the, that's actually the sensor right there. <laughs> um, so um, and I, I will show you that it is the, the correct code. But I'm going to, I'm going to enroll it by, um, um, by activating the, the tamper switch um, the way that you're traditionally supposed to enroll it. But that actually is the sensor right there. It detected the fault because the, dips, uh, the, because the dip switch is turned on for dip switch number three, and the read switch is enabled, and I faulted the sensor. But we're going to cancel for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the sensor again. Remember, uh, we have this small tab right here. We can just insert it, pop it open, and that's uh, going to do a tamper. And you see that uh, sensor CE. A A eight C E B A A eight. Um, that is the the code that you see right there um, on the the barcode right there. So that is the correct sensor. That is the one we want. So we're gonna choose OK. And um, so I'm gonna close the sensor just um, before I forget to do so. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna line the top up here. Get that proper. And that's no, not. On their right, it's because I have it facing the wrong way. So <laughs> we're gonna do this properly now. Here we go. It is closed, and so they're not. The top part's still not on there quite right. And there we go. Nice, satisfying click. It is closed. So uh, let's get into enrolling this. Um, setting, doing the zone settings. So 
We have uh, the sensor DLID. Uh, that one is correct. We just confirmed it. We're going to enroll this as a shock sensor. So we're going to switch this to shock. Um, now, it's not going to show faults on the panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to arm the system and put it into alarm. I'm going to show you both uh, ways that you can activate the sensor. Um, I'm going to make sure that the, uh, the magnet is properly aligned so we don't have any faults right away. Just doing that real quick. But uh, let's look at what we got here. So uh, we can set it as an IQ shock or a different type of shock. This is an IQ shock, so we're going to keep that as an IQ shock. Now, sensor group, there's two to choose from. Uh, so we have 13 and we have 17. If we choose 13 and the sensor is faulted, whether that's um, since we have the dip switch 3 enabled, whether it's detecting the door window being opened or detects the shock wave of the door window being smashed, um, if the system's armed away or armed stay, it's going to trigger an alarm if I choose 13. Now, if I choose 17, it's going to be the same thing, except the sensor will be automatically bypassed if the system is in armed stay mode. It's only going to be able to trigger an alarm in armed away mode. We want ours to trigger an alarm in armed stay or armed away, so we're going to choose uh, sensor group 13, shock. And sensor name, we can choose a name, um, or we can do a custom name. Uh, we're upstairs, so let's do upstairs shock detector. Um, chime type, this one you're not really going to worry too much for um, a shock sensor. This is mostly trigger an alarm. Um, although, um, it's, yeah, it's just going to it's just going to trigger an alarm because uh, you you can activate the door window sensor, but it's it's going to just give you the same response either way. So you're really not going to hear um, a chime too often, but you can choose one if you wish to, um, such as sonar. Uh, we'll keep it as as that. <laughs> um, and so voice prompts, again, you're not really going to hear the sensor's name too often, but if you do want to have it enabled, you can. And then the S-line encryption, uh, we do want to have that enabled, so we'll keep that as the source. So everything's correct there. We're reviewing all the settings. They look good to me. So we're going to choose Add New. Sensor added successfully. And the sensor has been added. So let's test this sensor out and show you how it works. Uh, so let's press the Home key at the bottom, and we're going to go Home. <laughs> You can hear that we have our upstairs shock detector enrolled with the system properly. <laughs> so um, now the system's going to give the same response, whether it detects the shock wave of a door window being smashed, or whether it's the door window being opening and the, the magnet separates from the sensor and activates the read switch inside. So um, I'm going to put the system into arm stay mode. And uh, we're going to hopefully get an alarm on the system. I'm going to try to fault it by doing um, a tapping against the sensor and getting it to detect a shock wave. And then a uh, headphone warning, by the way, this will trigger an alarm and it, it will be loud. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, we're going to arm stay here. And we're going to input our master code, which ours is still at the default. One, two, three, four. You usually change that code, but we kept it at that for simplicity purposes, for just a testing. But let's. Uh, Hopefully, fault this guy and. And you see, we got our we got um, the sensor to fault. We clearly had the magnet um, still in line with the sensor, so it detected the shock wave, and that's how we triggered an alarm. Now I'm going to do the same thing, um, but this time I'm going to uh, separate the magnet from the sensor as if I were opening a door or window. And you're going to see that it gives me the same response on the system. So let's go ahead and arm stay again. One, two, three, four. And remember, it's 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 treating it as though it's an activated shock sensor. It's going to send the same signal to the panel whether I did the shock wave or whether I do this. So let's go ahead. Headphone warning. There we go. I'm going to lose my hearing by the time I'm 30. So anyway, um, okay. So that. That is how you enroll the Qualsys IQ Shock S with your Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus security system or your standard IQ Panel 2 um, security system enrolls pretty much like any S-Line sensor. Um, and you set the zone settings accordingly. Just remember um, to uh, adjust the potentiometer inside and um, adjust the dip switches accordingly. So that's how you enroll your Qualsys IQ Shock S. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below if you like the video. And remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. If you um, have any questions or you want to learn more about alarm monitoring services, <laughs> send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.